Okay, welcome back to Striking FPV R&D. My name's Ashton, and this is a bit weird because this doesn't look at all like the place where I normally stay. Because it's not. This is a house in Lampoon because I've been shooting FPV stuff up in Mae Hong Song, which is near Chiang Mai, which is also near Lampoon. Anyway, I digress. So here's the thing. I've been watching the news and some guys at MIT won an award for this toroidal propeller design. Why is that important? Well, supposedly makes things much quieter and having just flown the Cinewoop a lot in the last week or so, I can attest to just how loud this Cinewoop actually is. So, toroidal propellers are supposed to be quieter. Now they had a kind of bi-blade, technically quad blade design, which is kind of like this, but I saw also a tri-blade design, which I really like, and so that's what this is. Behold, Fusion 360. This is not a tutorial, I'm just gonna show you roughly how I've done this, and I'm also going to reveal why I'm making this video. So if we go back to the beginning, basically we start off with the nuts. This is a traditional four millimeter uh, nut design, kind of like on this Roma F6, which I like very much, uh, but I'm also using the same kind of mounting for my Veyron 35. Now here's the thing. We then have to set the diameter. This is a 90 millimeter uh, circle. And why 90 millimeters? Well, 3.5 inch. My Veyron 35 is 3.5 inch drone, uses a 3.5 inch prop and ideally I would like this design to work with that drone when I get back home, which will be in about two weeks. Anyway, so that's what this is. The next little design I did are these. These are profiles. So if we then zoom in on here, you'll notice that these kind of look like, well, I mean, it looks like a Mario star right now with this top line, but basically these are wing profiles, one for the beginning, one for the end or vice versa. And then right at the end, we have this completely vertical. Why is that? Well. If you look at the toroidal propeller design, the basic concept is the blade comes out sweeping like this, but then it comes back in again. And if it comes back in again, the opposite side then needs to flip over. And so basically what's happening is we're coming out like this, going straight up, and then as we come back in, it then has to reverse, kind of like a Mobius strip. So that's what this bit is. The next two profiles I add, well not profiles, they're called rails, because we're gonna use the loft command. So if I switch back to orthographic view here, you can kind of see what's going on. It's a little bit kind of weird to understand, but if I go to this top view and click on this, this is the bottom profile. You see it starts out on the outside edge, goes right to the edge there, and then comes back in on the inside. And then the top profile is the exact same thing. It starts on the inside edge, reaches out to the limit, and then comes back on the outside edge. So in 3D, it kind of looks like this. And what will happen once we run the loft command, there we go, it produces this funny shape. So this is that kind of curvy, kind of uh, scoopy shape that you recognize in a lot of uh, propeller blades. And that's just one half, and then we do another loft command to then come back in. And so what we're left with is this, this kind of weird thing. And I suppose if I were to duplicate this, then I would get my bi-blade design that's on the original paper. But we're going for tri-blade. So, what we need to do, we're gonna run the combine command in cut to actually get rid of that center section. And then here comes another weird bit. If we turn off the body and see what the cut command actually did, I don't need this to come all the way back in. So I'm just gonna move that back up by running the offset face by 20 millimeters and that just moves it up there, which is all good. And now if we actually run the circular pattern command, you'll then notice that we've got this design, which actually looks kind of cool. In fact, if I were to get rid of the offset, yeah, this this almost, yeah, I'd be tempted to actually print this just for fun, um, but we don't want to do that, so I'm going to undo this. We'll keep the offset command so that we've got this design, and then now the challenge is to just get rid of those extra edges. So how I do that? Well, basically, we run another offset, no, not offset, combine command under cut, and then you get this. But here's the problem. I didn't design the profiles perfectly, so it's cutting fully on the bottom, but it's not cut at the top edge. And there's a simple solution for this, which actually plays into what we need anyway, because I plan to print this on an FDM printer. You can't print a really fine edge on the bed because then bed adhesion, you know, that's an issue. So basically I then chop off the top. So you'll notice this edge, right? If we go back, there is no edge, it's completely smooth, but then once I run this command to kind of slice off the entire top edge, I then get this 
flattening all the way around, which also manages to cut into that section, which now means this is a separate unit. I can hide it. And then we can go back to, well, I'll, I'll run the cut command on the bottom first. And then we can once again do our circular um, duplication thing, circular pattern tool, and then we get this successfully designed. Oh no, that's wrong. Uh, remove those. There. Believe me. Nope, don't believe me. This is completely wrong. What's happened? Oh, I haven't combined it yet. There. That's it. There's one actual command that I skipped, and that's the one down here. This is actually the offset command, because here's the annoying thing. I say funny, but actually it's really annoying. The annoying thing is this. When I first tried pre previewing this in the Super Slicer, the issue was basically it was too thin, and there was an issue where the software was kind of failing to resolve the geometry properly, and it was just like dragging the nozzle through midair. So I found that I actually needed to thicken the whole the whole surface. So the way I did it, I basically selected this side. No, not that side. Yeah, this side. And I ran the uh, offset face by literally just, what is it, 0 0.5? 0 0.5 millimeters to thicken the blade such that the slicing software would be able to resolve the whole thing. And this is an issue, right? If your 3D printer doesn't have a really fine nozzle and you can't, you know, print that thinly. I think the issue with 3D printing in general is like we can't make things too thin without it potentially failing and becoming more fragile. So I purposely had to make this thicker. I think on the middle profile, it was something like what, two millimeters thick. And so that's not ideal compared to like these, these props, which are much thinner, but um, it's what, what we have to do. So moving on, I then do the circular pattern thing again. I then combine the whole thing together and then we hide stuff that's no longer important. We're left with our basic design, a toroidal tri-blade propeller for my center work. The only, you know, last little things to do are just these little sharp edges. Even in something that's injection molded, sharp edges tend to be a problem. So you want to smooth them out. So we ran a fillet on this little edge there and then sorry we run a shaft for on the edge in the middle where the shaft goes through and then we run a fillet on all of these edges just to make it a little bit smoother and that is the final design neck which if i now switch to perspective we can see it looks roughly like this so why this video well basically i can't test this because my 3d printer isn't here so I've just decided I'll upload the design and anybody can test it. So if you look down in the video description, there's a link to Thingiverse where I've uploaded this design and because it's a work in progress, I basically plan to make a couple, a couple other versions, maybe a three inch, maybe even a 2.5 inch. But once you get that small, then the problem is the thickness of the blade, the heaviness of it, probably not worth it. So I think 3.5 is kind of the limit for thickness of blade and you know strength of everything. Methods of printing. FDM often has issues with overhangs, and because this overhang is like more than 45 degrees, unless you've got a really well-tuned printer, this might not even work for me. So, you know, who knows? Resin, I think, should be okay-ish. And if you're one of those lucky people that has a nylon SLS printer, so you're like laser centering it, you should be totally fine with this. So, give it a go. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below or on Thingiverse to tell me that the design is bad, doesn't work, is too thick or whatever. Or if it does work, then yeah, also leave me a comment. Or like, you know, make your own video, share it, you know, spread it far and wide, everything that's all good about this design. Yeah, that's about it. Um, also, 633 subscribers now, even though I haven't posted in a long, long time. So thank you very much. If you like content like this, then please consider subscribing. Like the video if you like it. Dislike the video if you want to spite me, no harm there. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, I guess we'll see if any of you guys actually get this to work properly. Yeah.